What's up everybody? Welcome back to Mastering MetaHuman. Today we're going to be diving into MetaHuman identities and DNA. I think it's an integral part of getting into the custom face mesh pipeline. Um, before diving fully into it, I think that you need to learn some of these basics. So let's get into it. Alright, so we're going to jump right back into the engine where we ended our last episode. If you go to your content browser and you navigate here into your MetaHumans folder, what you can do is right click and then you should have a MetaHuman animator section if you're an Unreal Engine 5.5 and you have the MetaHuman plugin enabled. What you could do to check is go up to Edit Plugins and if you go into the search bar, type in MetaHuman, you should see these three pop up. If you only see MetaHuman SDK and MetaHuman Runtime, that means you have to download the MetaHuman plugin directly from the Epic Games Store. It should show up below your current projects. Go ahead and click download and add to Unreal Engine. And next time you load up Unreal Engine, and next time you go into the plugin section, you'll see the MetaHuman new experimental pop up. You go ahead and enable that. Go back to your content browser, right click MetaHuman animator. You're now gonna have this MetaHuman identity. We could go ahead and just do MHID underscore test for this purpose. Once we open that up, we're going to have this new window. There's plenty of things that you could do in here, and we're going to be going into it a lot further in depth in later tutorials. But for right now, I'm just going to be jumping in through a basic setup pipeline. So we could go up to create components from mesh. Actually, let's go up to MetaHuman identity here from mesh. One of my test base meshes here. And you could do this with any one of your skeletal meshes, as long as it's a facial one. You can see right when you import it, you're going to get something a little bit like this. And what I like to do is set the field of view to something really low, like 5 or 10. You can zoom on out. And you want to try to match it to a front-facing camera as much as possible. That one looks great. So we're going to go ahead and promote frame. This is going to set the front view. Current promote frame will be says front view. Go ahead and hit OK. Once you click this, you're going to have a track markers pop up in the top left. You go ahead and click this. Now you're going to see all these different markers pop up. These will be relevant to the lips, the different folds around the nose, the eyes, and the eyebrows. From here, if you're working with a character or a skeletal mesh that has, you know, these markers way offset from where they actually are, you click and drag them around to match what you have in your skeletal mesh. Once you have those all set, you go ahead and click on MetaHuman Identity Solve. This is going to be actually creating all the underlining data of how everything's going to be working within your MetaHuman. Shouldn't take too long, and once you have that, you go to Mesh to MetaHuman. Before you click on Mesh to MetaHuman, we have to select the body if you don't have one set already. We'll just select any of them for this use case. Go to Mesh to MetaHuman, Auto Rig MetaHuman Identity, Skeletal Mesh Only. If you want the full MetaHuman asset, you can go ahead and click the bomb one. Again, for the test purpose, we'll stick to the skeletal mesh only. All right, now we're back to here. Let's hope it doesn't crash again. Gonna go up, make sure we select the body. Any body type should be fine. Mesh to MetaHuman, skeletal mesh only. It's gonna prompt us to log in. You'll see here it says Mesh to MetaHuman. Skeletal mesh with an embedded MetaHuman DNA is now available in your current content browser. Go ahead and hit OK. Once that's done, you'll open up your folder again where you create your MetaHuman identity, and you're now going to have capture data and your skeletal mesh. That's all you really need to create the skeletal mesh. If you want to create the full MetaHuman, again, you would go into your MetaHuman identity, and in Mesh to MetaHuman, you would click on this bottom one here. Now I want to emphasize the importance of the MetaHuman ID because this is going to be a window that we do a lot of our future pipeline work in. There's a lot of different tools and different areas within here. Again, you could create components from footage. If you wanted to use the ArcKit motion capture, like facial capture technology within an iPhone, you could take that footage and bring it directly into Unreal Engine and create a MetaHuman strictly from that footage. There's plenty of different things you could do. Again, we've got the import and export DNA. Now that we've created our MetaHuman identity fully, we could export this DNA and import it into a different one. When we go to export DNA, it's going to export as a .DNA file. We'll just call it 
test DNA, that DNA. Go ahead and save that. It's also going to save out a separate file as a .json. This will be for the brow data. And this should just take a couple seconds and export out correctly. We can pop open that .json file and it's gonna just show us all the different datas on the brow, but we can't open up the .dna file and it's text out or anything like that because it is encrypted. But the DNA file holds all the different information. Think of it as, you know, your actual DNA for a human, right? It holds all the different data on rigging and different characteristics with the character. So in a later video, I'll show you how to go further in depth with customizing the DNA files and how to proceed with moving with those further. That's going to be all for today's video. I just wanted to reiterate the importance of the MetaHuman identity and the DNA files. We're going to be using them a lot more frequently in future episodes, so I wanted to at least establish a small baseline where you're going to be a little bit more familiar with them moving forward. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to bring your own custom facial meshes into MetaHuman using the current mesh to MetaHuman pipeline. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them below. Again, keep learning and I'll see you next time.